Okay, let's take it. Um, we all know, or all people are already over here know that everyone can edit Wikipedia. But some untold story is that everyone can lead Wikipedia. Everybody can govern Wikipedia because Wikipedia is actually self-governed. It's such a marvelous project that actually people not only write the articles, but they take care for themselves. Like, they care for their disputes, their policies, uh, their rules, what is notable and what is not, what is neutral, what is not. Actually, the great, the great thing for the people who run it, like Wikimedia Foundation. So I fixed it for you. And here, the huge and in the center, and it will not go out anyway, it's a wiki culture. That's why we have what we have, this self-governed project. We will see how does it influence the case. And actually, how many people of you are from Wikipedia? Like most of you. No, 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 exclusively. And other wiki projects? Because when I was de delivering a talk about Wikipedia a year ago, um, actually none of people were from Wikipedia, and it was quite, quite strange for me. Um, okay. Firstly, my story. I'm a Polish Wikimedian, and I entered the, uh, the project in 2004. If you have been on uh, Hippies with Guns, you remember this transition between tech heads and this eternal September when all the people who rushed on Wikipedia, yeah, so one, I was one of the first people who came with the Russian Polish Wikipedia, and it was year 2004, and we had some clash of cultures um, because the tech heads, because they were the tech heads, actually over there had their own culture where every, it was a small community, everyone was agreeing with everyone, and suddenly a lot of people came, a lot of people with completely different visions and backgrounds, and thoughts how it should be done. So we had a clash. We had a clash in 2004, we had a protest, even a few CISIPs were protesting against other CISIPs. Um, it was quite cumbersome. However, everything was, um, everyth everything was clean and tidy. Um, on Polish Wikipedia, we didn't have such great wars like an English Wikipedia. So actually, even in 2005, I and several other people became sysops. Uh, after that, uh, I, changed, I changed the role. From being the protester, I became the real part of establishment, as you can say. And I was the member of the first Polish arbitration committee elected with the second place. So it, it shows something. So, Wikipedia is the place which, where you can really fast, rapidly join something what we call establishment. You can really become the leader, and not even the leader on a small part, or the small project. You can actually quickly become a living legend. Like, all of us know the names, like, I don't know, Afaya or Eloquence. Actually, you can, you can really fast become one of them. It's not a big problem. And the big thing that I saw when I entered the Wikipedia was that not only you can edit articles and not only someone fast corrects your articles, but actually becoming a leader, showing off your vision, showing off your ideas and introducing your ideas is childish easy. It's really easy. Everyone just waits for you to come up and show something new. That's very that's very, very helpful if you have some initiative or imagination. And actually in so-called real life or traditional life, uh, that's not that easy because even, let's take a, take a look on the work of editor. It's a grant work. It's a regular work. Actually in a regular company, if you get admitted, this is the work that you will get. However, it's much more difficult to get a to get the job as a kind of a manager or coordinator when you are a student or you are a high school student. And actually, you can, you can become a big manager on a big internet project like Wikipedia just being, I don't know, on the first, on the first year of your, of your university education. Actually, in traditional life, it's not that easy. So maybe you should use that. So, on Wikipedia we have open admission. You don't need to submit your CVs anyway, or covering letters. You have very limited hierarchies. 
And the leading over there is much less complicated because you need only the limited set of skills. You don't need a personal charisma like in real life. You don't need some managerial and uh, professional skills. This set of skills is very limited. And then you are still a volunteer. So actually the scope of your work is limited to what you want to do. If you want to do only one particular thing, like, I don't know, mediating, you can just mediate. And that's all what you need. However, leading is still more difficult than just editing. Because you need soft skills. And it's, and it's not like that you can just copy and paste something from some internet site or the book. You just need that to have. Then you have more contact with people and it means more stress, simply. And then it's, it's highly time consuming. Maybe not when you're just using your leading skills to improve some articles, because you can make it here and there. But if you want to be uh, some kind of like a project leader from the real life, it means the wiki project organizer, that it means that you need to be almost 24 seven online because people want to communicate with you, you need to respond, you need to react on what other people do. Fortunately, all of us over here can be leaders. It's not that difficult as it may look like. Because, and it's pretty important too, because communication, for instance, is a big thing on Crowded Wiki. I dare say, and then convincing the others might be, might be an even bigger thing. Convincing, not making them to do something, but convincing them. So after all, our purpose is to be effective, to get things done. We want to have articles, we have, want to have new policies, we want to have the better quality on Wikipedia, we want to push, for instance, notability rules in other direction. So actually it means that we need to convince the people because the people govern Wikipedia. There is no, I don't know, some deity or higher authority that we need to convince. There is no one bureaucratic rule that you need to just make and blah, I made 10,000 experience points and papa, I, I just, I'm just on a new level on role playing game. No, it's not like that. You need to convince the people and actually, it means that you need to lead them somehow. That's leadership. And what kind of leadership can you make? You can't make people to do something. You can't really make, uh, make people to do something by threatening them or paying them. You don't have any higher authority. All you can do is like using your soft skills, showing them love and appreciation, and then they will follow you. So, leaders love wikis for their openness and ability that they can just introduce their ideas and visions. All the people with initiative would love wikis. So maybe we should show them off. And on the other hand, wikis love leaders because they need, they need their care, they need their attribution, they need cleaning up. And actually foundation loves wikis too and leaders too. Did you, have you been on the, um, on the keynote by Stu Gardner? And a lot of things from this booklet, it was not about editing, actually. It was more about leadership. And if you've been to wiki movements, the actually foundation states that they need many people with purely managerial skills or uh, organizational skills. For instance, contacts between many wiki projects. It's highly needed and there are not that many people who would like to come up and make this communication possible. You don't need to edit to be profitable for Wikipedia. And that's again, wiki culture. So it's pretty easy to step up on wiki and become the leading person. And it's actually not that easy in, in a real life. And actually, it's not that easy in internet life in other sites. Even if they use the MediaWiki software, which, act, which actually forces you to show your initiative. Because you can't take a look on other people and wait for them and expect them to solve problems for you. Actually, 
people on this, this is my experience at least. People on other projects we are not learned to work in these conditions. They want to have some established pure leaders and they just want to follow up. This is purely wiki culture that people convert themselves to leaders if needed. So quick summary. Sorry for bashing with them with that. So Wikimedia needs leadership and provide great opportunities for organizers, visionaries, managers, and mentors. There are many activities for leaders, even judges in arbitration committees. There is no one set of skills. There are many things to do, really many. Volunteer-based projects with limited hierarchies allow to make your ideas, your ideas, amazingly fast. You can make it real. The true thing is a distinction between leadership and dictatorship. This is the first thing. Because today I was talking with a man about managing Wikipedia. And I was showing out that actually Wikipedia has its own managers, managers inside. For him, it was not the story because he was always convinced that manager is the person who has some higher authority over you. Like, I don't know, he or she pays you or can suck you off, <laughs> things like that. And on Wikipedia, actually, we have both because we have systems and arbitration committees, so they have a power over you. And, but on the other thing, they can organize things, they can communicate things, they can show things. They make a lot of things that actually project managers, executive managers, things like that in so-called real world, in traditional companies do. And these are the volunteers still. Volunteers not only edit, but they make all this story run. And leadership is pretty needed too, because great Wiki leaders improve Wikimedia on a larger scale. You can leverage your work by being a good leader because you're serving as an example. So actually, not only you behave according to some code of conduct, but other people will start to behave in the same manner. Then you're establishing and promoting the best practices. Sometimes putting up, having your, I don't know, half an hour or an hour and showing off a document, writing some kind of documentation, uh, guidelines can be very helpful for other people. You can be surprised how after the years people will follow some guidelines, some best practices. Then you are communicating with others more effectively. That means that you have less quarrels, more things getting done. And one more thing, if you convince one person to work on Wikipedia or you convince one user who's edgy or fisty to become a good person, then actually you have a work of two persons getting done. So more leadership means more, more insight, more creativity, better environment and higher standards. And actually all the higher standards, not only articles higher standards, but higher standards of processing things, higher ethical standards, better Wikipedia. So how to develop more leader in you and getting your things done faster. There's one beautiful document. I don't know, have you read it? There is an old document on English Wikipedia created by a pretty controversial but very interesting person, the Kunktator. The Kunktator was a user in the early days of Wikipedia starting from, I guess, 2001. The document was uh, created on this old wiki before MediaWiki in the first place. And Kunktator was the person actually probably who outed Larry Sanger. There was a big quarrel between those two guys. And Kunktator's uh, point of view was that actually Wikipedia is an exercise in anarchy. That's why there was this document that Wikipedia is not an exercise in anarchy. So actually, my belief is that we are in the middle ground. You can't say that we are living in a pure anarchy anyway. However, you can't ignore that. You can't ignore that the Wikipedia actually is a mixture of anarchy, democracy, bureaucracy, and everything we have over there. And Kung Tator wrote a beautiful document, How to Build Wikipedia. If you want to follow me, there is such a document still on Meta, an English Wikipedia. This is here. You can Google it.
And here is a simple set of rules given in the very early stage of Wikipedia. None of the, uh, actually, not all of them are still valid because, um, actually, they are valid. Everybody agrees about them, but some of them are still surprising. And they are very, very old. The first one, and my, fav my most favorite one, is this one. Be in charge and be humble. I think that this is the best advice that you can give to any leader. And be in charge. That means that you must be decisive. You must get the things done. You cannot escape the responsibility. Like hiding your head in the sand just does not solve the problem. Because you want to be the leader, so you must do something about that. My experience from Polish Arbitration Committee is that, for instance, decisiveness is crucial. Our problem was that when Polish Arbitration Committee has been created. Actually, CISO wanted to push as many things to Arbitration Committee as they could. And then, uh, not only we didn't want to take all those things, but we really had problems with decisiveness, with implementing our ideas. And we've been bashed for that. Anyway, so be decisive. On the other hand, be humble. So, be respectful for other people. Understand that you really don't know everything and you are not 1% okay with some things. You, don't, you are not always right. There are many things that you need to improve. There are many things that you need to learn. If you even think that you are better, then be polite. Talk with people. Learn their, learn their story. Then we will have both more pleasant environment, and actually higher ethical standards. How to be decisive and how to be humble in the same way. That's the tricky thing. Sometimes, for instance, personally, I think I'm too humble, and some users just get away with some too bold edits. However, you can't have both ways. Well, you still need to practice, find your own balance. There will always be harsher sysops who will be more decisive. There will be people who will be more humble. We need to make it, uh, make it out. Then, second thing, understanding bias. And it means mostly understanding your own bias. Here is, if you've been, once again, in Rappaport, about NP NPUV. There was the old definition of NPUV, that NPUV is actually what consensus gave you. Not what sources gave you, but what consensus gave you. And actually, Kunktatar states from the very beginning the things that I believe too. Like, there is no, in, in reality, we don't have a neutral point of view. Yeah, it's an ideal. You can't really establish such a thing. So, so you need to understand your own bias, understand the bias of other people, and create consensus building up in that. The third thing, following understanding bias is appreciating idiosyncrasy. So we appreciate that we are different. Being different gives us the opportunity to actually create better articles and better policies. Because we have different points of view. And we need to learn from each other. Then, this point had a second meaning. Because in the early days of Wikipedia, there was something like right to leave. That you actually have a right to leave and that's all. Now. Actually, when we transferred from tech heads to, to the next stage, we understood that we have a, actually a right to differentiate. We have a right to have different opinions on the project. And it doesn't mean that somebody needs to necessarily leave. Well, we can live with that. Then, using Wikipedia software as a community, community-based Wikipedia software. And actually, we do that. We do that through tool servers, through gadgets, through many things like that. But we can still be better like that. Fifth thing is making big plans on Wikipedia. So make your documents on Wikipedia. Share your ideas. Even if you think that you will not implement things, just share your ideas on Wikipedia. And that was one of the things that I have done on Polish Wikipedia. There was such a thing like good articles. And I believe that good articles were overly democratic. 
Like people were voting on what's good and what's not, and there was no clear process of, of making sure that you have a good, really good article, like with a scientific point of view. And I proposed the better articles. Unfortunately, due to personal reasons, I didn't, then I, I needed to quit running this project. So then it was scaled down by, by a colleague of mine. However, after a year or two, it was re-implemented, things like that. Actually, it still lives on on Polish Wikipedia. Like 70, 80% of text st literally stays on the Polish Wikipedia. So even if you don't have a time to run your project, maybe somebody else will. Maybe you will inspire someone else. Maybe something better will be coined out. Always you can, I don't know, go back to your ideas. So just put them down. And the last thing, or maybe the other last thing, is avoiding cables. That's the hash thing. And actually, in Polish Wikipedia, we really tried not to go there. Following the spirit and letter of the GFDL, I'm pretty sure that nowadays we are completely kosher with that. And just to make the circle, being respectful but firm. Be respectful for the others. And in Conctator's point of view, it was like, be respectful when you are a protester but be firm on your stance. Be respectful, so don't bash the people who have authority over you. Don't bash them, try to convince them. Be polite. It doesn't help anyone to be harsh on, those, on the people. However, be firm. You on, this, and the, on the second side, when you're a sysop, be respectful for the people. Don't kill them. Don't destroy their articles just because they are, and because you can but be firm and introduce your policies when you have, for instance, a troll. So, please, if you have some time, maybe later, copy this document and maybe just take a look on that. I think it's still pretty useful. It has like, I don't know, maybe 10 or nine years old. It's, it has like 10 years. But I think that we still uh, can learn from it. That's all. Any questions? Okay, because, well, my experience was for Polish Wiki and actually it worked pretty well. However, as I have seen, um, actually there are many things that were implemented on English Wiki pretty easily. For instance, Wiki projects or portals. It was implemented very easily. This thing was implemented by a Polish user who just copied the thing firstly from French Wikipedia to Polish Wikipedia and then from Polish Wikipedia to English Wikipedia. And suddenly every, everyone, everyone was happy with that. And, well, I know that there are many bad ideas, really bad ideas, and then you have conflicts. However, sometimes it's pretty easy to get things done. Still, we are talking about the fifth side of the Internet, the biggest non-commercial side of the Internet. And still, any regular person has a chance to improve it and give something for it. Uh, something like that. And of, at first, I, I don't believe that everyone will go up and Im introduce leading skills in the same pace. Um, I don't believe in such a thing. But yes, actually, everyone can be a leader. And everyone can use some simple, some simple skills as long as he or she is humble and respectful for the others. And then we actually get the better project because we just introduce better standards of cooperation. 
we introduce more more vision and more understanding what we are actually doing Actually, uh -huh. well, actually, I was always believing in my personal example, and I don't know teaching people on IRC when IRC was popular, and I don't know I was not that bad. I I don't know there was no I think any request for comments or any big controversy with me on Polish Wikipedia. I was uh, introduced to the arbitration committee for s for such a reason, um, so I think yes. That's why, for instance, in Polish Wikipedia, we have created something like tests for future admins. We have tests like some complex user cases or cases of studies, and then there were questions for them: What would you do? And then there were some. It will. Mm, we had some questions and answers, so we had some 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 process why would you do that and why why not that uh, why do, why haven't you thought about doing this and that just to improve the level of administration on polish wiki because we believed in that that when we have the better administ uh, the better systems that it would just go down to the to the regular users and so on and so forth Hello, uh, my name is Brandon Harris. I, uh, <laughs> hells yeah. Uh, I work for the foundation, designer. This talk is identity, reputation, and gratitude. Or as uh, a lot of you are very much afraid about, about social media and networking tools and how they're coming. <gasps> so we're, ta we're, we're calling this one identity, reputation, and gratitude, and gratitude is the last thing in the list, but we're going to make that be the first thing that we talk about. Because I want you all to look around and see somebody you know, somebody you don't know. doesn't matter. This person is in the project with you, and I want you to thank them. Why do we do that? Gratitude, gratitude creates empathy. Empathy is important. In fact, it's so important that Professor Benkler stole my talk. <laughs> he dropped out that wonderful, wonderful slide which actually shows all the data about how increased empathy and increased gratitude will you know, promote usability, accessibility, all sorts and kinds of wonderful things between humans, not just between man and the machine. We know that expressions of gratitude early in a life cycle promote survivability. That is absolutely a done deal. When you thank a new editor, when you thank a newbie, they, they stick around. This creates empathy, again. And empathy promotes positive activity working with you, working with you, working with you. I understand you, now we can work together and not fight. Or we can be collaborative. But in order to do that, we need to have identity. So, who am I? Identity is a contextual thing. It's always context. I've grown up my entire life as Brandon. Eventually, I got online and my identity kind of mutated, and I became Jorm. My parents think of me as their son. People I work with, I'm a metalhead. <laughs> to the bulk of the, of the Wikimedia project community, I'm a designer. And to my girlfriend, I'm, a, I'm the guy who doesn't take out the trash. 
I'm also the angry hippie. So, what does identity give us? What's its value? Well, clearly, you know, it makes me recognizable. We all know, we can just say, I know this person. Because of that, it also makes it easy to find me. And in a big project like this, that's important. You want to be able to say, I need to find the person who can help me with this. Not just ask a question out there and pray that somebody answers. Because right now, that's kind of how it works. But instead, we can go like, I want to find the person whose job it is this way, and we can do that with better identity mechanisms. Identity allows me to take pride in my accomplishments. But even more than that, it binds my accomplishments to my identity. And what does that do? Well, it creates a reputation. All my good things and all my bad things are right there, tied on. And that keeps me honest. So let's talk about social networks. We got a boos and hisses. Is there any of that coming? OK. Yeah, all right. Social network's a crappy term. It's awful. Because it's too overloaded. It means too many things to too many different people. When people hear the term, they mostly think of this frivolous, we're just going to play around, you know, Facebooky, MySpace, let me tell you about the music I listen to kind of thing. But really, a social network is any type of a community that has ways to recognize each other. All communities with identity are social networks, all of them, including Wikipedia. But I actually prefer, when we talk about Wikipedia, to use a different term. It's a collaborative system. Collaborative systems are also social networks, but you know. Now, communities, while being built by people, all produce a product. And that product is defined as pretty much their motivation. Motivations of communities are important. That's what defines them. Some communities are based around entertainment. Xbox Live, Reddit, they're just playing around. It's fun. Others are, uh, you know, their news or mischief. If you ever spend any time on 4chan, you'll understand. Dating, dating communities. I mean, because really, why, are you, why else are you there? Or you have collaboration stuff. Quora, Stack Exchange, and Wikipedia. We're trying to build something. So what's everyone's biggest fear? Well, yeah, Facebook. That we're going to become Facebook. I hear that all the time. Oh, we're going to add like buttons. Oh, we're going to have friend circles. Oh, these identity things are going to make us do this sort of stuff. Well, you see, that's not going to happen. We're not Facebook. We're never going to be Facebook because we have a completely different motivation. We're Wikimedia. We're building something. And that right there prevents us from ever becoming Facebook. I want to talk for a minute about how communities are normally created how they grow. What happens is you have a person with interest and an identity. And then eventually, you find somebody else, somebody else finds her with the same interest and an identity. And then they have a conversation. And then eventually, more people will bring, in, bring themselves into the conversation, and still more. And eventually, you'll create ties between these. All these identities get connected together. And now, now that you have a connected set of people with conversations, you have created a community. And it, it just happens, because we are social creatures. Identity plus conversation equals community. People join communities for different motivations. Everybody's personal motivation for joining a community changes. But we're all hardwired for social thinking. We all want to talk. We all want to be friends. No one really wants to be a bad guy or an enemy. They also want value from the community. I mean, I could go join a Harley Davidson Motor Club thing, but get no value from it, because I really don't know anything about Harley Davidson motorcycles, or even ride them, or care. I might do it just, you know, for the beer, right? <laughs> but, 
you know, otherwise I need to have a reason to be there. Everyone's motivations, they're largely personal. You really can't pin one person's motivation for being on Wikipedia to uh, another person. Some have altruistic ideas, some other people want to do research, some people want to just be uh, editors and write and have, you know, be able to say, like, I was part of this thing. They're largely personal, but everyone wants to be heard. Now, here's the bad thing. In order, the way that you're heard on Wikipedia or any of the other projects is by making a contribution, an edit. And unfortunately, edits have become the social currency. The more edits you have, the more likely you are to be heard. So you're spending your, your, your edits to like talk. And that's not exactly the best thing because it creates an environment where shouting it makes, the, the more you shout makes you more popular or banned, I guess. What this does is it sets us up for a system of evaporative cooling. Evaporative cooling is a, uh, a social network term <laughs> uh, involving the dynamics of the way communities work. Contributors to a community have value. In it, there are high value contributors, medium value contributors, low value contributors. The, me the metaphor of evaporative cooling says is, is that when a high value contributor leaves, it's entirely likely that they're going to take other contributors with them. And by leave, I don't mean goes away. I mean, for any reason, they got too busy, they died, they just started a fight with too many people, taking a wiki break, because low value contributors get their value from the high value contributors. They learn from them, they, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's basically, you know, there's the, 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 the teachers and the students, and eventually the students become the teachers, or in theory, that's the way it's supposed to be. But as highest value contributors leave, the overall tone and health of the community will decrease. And that's normally not a problem, because in most communities, there's an influx of new users from the bottom. And as they come in, they provide value to the highest level who, become, who start to mentor them. And this, the entire cycle is a, is a churn. There's a user churn base. That's healthy. We're not healthy. Because, frankly, we did it backwards. You know, I, met, I said earlier that, that uh, a community is focused towards a product. And normally, you start with the individuals, you add the conversations, you have the community, and then you create your product. Well, actually, Wikipedia started with the product first and focused on the community second. Um, that's really not very good, especially because they've completely avoided working on identity. And by they, I mean everybody. They being your project, your project, your project. Because of that, social norms and currency evolved organically and poorly. And it's killing the projects. We know this. If we lose the editors, if they don't come back, if we can't re reverse the trend, that's it. We'll end up with a, like, spinning disks in a, in a box and no, no, updated, no updates ever. But we can fix this. And how we're going to do that, well, we have to introduce identity. We have to introduce better identity mechanisms, specifically to encourage empathy. We're going to tie them into collaboration systems. We're going to reinforce identity through community goals. And that's the important thing. This is why we're never going to be Facebook. Because it's not about your name or your picture or anything like that. It's about your role. I am a translator. I have commit access. I work with Wiki Loves Monuments. I'm a chapter member. My role, how the project affects me. We're gonna take your individual identity to the community goals and come back and forth. And so that binds you, that binds you to the community and that binds the community to you. And it just strengthens the ties. Because then you feel loved and you feel appreciated, and you have gratitude.
So we come back to gratitude here. And now it's my turn. I'm going to thank you, every single one of you people, because I'm filled with gratitude. Every day I wake up and I realize I'm part of this thing. We are fighting evil. You think, are you laughing, but we are. Because when you understand things, when you give people free knowledge, they, they can't be put back in these teeny boxes. When you teach people that they are being oppressed, they can't be oppressed. That's how it works. That's what we're doing. We're changing the world for the better forever. This is the first line of my obituary. And I want to thank you for letting me do it. That's all I got. I'm certain that there are questions. <laughs> questions? Trying to avoid peeing on myself here. I'm going to sit down. Go on. You mean like, um, you're not talking about sock puppeting or anything like that? No, no, no. I'm, I'm talking about goodwill, uh, uh, multiple so, okay. Um, you just don't want your reputation to cross the borders? If you have two goodwill uh, identities, I'm a little confused as to why you wouldn't want that. But, um, oh, well, I mean, people do that all the time. I mean, in, in other things, um, like a LinkedIn profile versus a Facebook profile, right? Um, Sure, yeah, no, so um, so we're talking about pseudonymity there, and that's something that people uh, uh, confuse. Um, we have the, the, the concept of, of personal identity, like what's on my driver's license and passport and all that other stuff, that's reality, and then we have my online you know, nicknames and so forth, and it's my personal identity, my nicknames are very closely tied, you, you, you know, I don't, I don't try to hide behind it or, or don't wanna you know, worry about it, but I have a lot of friends who like, actually try to make sure that their online life is completely, you know, segmented. So they have like a life that's for work and then they have a life that's, you know, for friends and, and they don't mi mix them up. Yeah, so what, what's your view on that? I think it's fine. I mean, everybody does it. Why not? I know everybody does it. No, I mean, I mean, I mean, I don't think that I, my view on that is that it's natural. So uh, the one of the earlier slides talks about context, identity is being context contextual. And so, so your, your context, uh, your identity is going to change in that, in that those things. That's just always the way it works. My parents don't think of me as uh, a metalhead. They just don't, and and I don't try to bring that 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 part of thing of my life to them. Dario. Uh-huh. And they say, uh, quote, Wikipedia has policies that discourage interpersonal ties. A user interface that makes direct private exchanges between community members difficult. And some groups know that with Wiki Public, the time around calling each other's interests can be tough, suggesting that they're trying to destroy um, uh, social bonds uh, uh, and increase uh, I think social bonds. Now, there's been a lot of uh, Mm -hmm. And I think we need to restart uh, thinking our own, uh, uh, you know, user user interface design from from this point. Because for a very long time, there's been a discussion all the time that, uh, well, we thought that any social element of Wikipedia would destroy uh, commitment and bonds. 
Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's false too. Um, I, I don't I, I don't agree with that premise that you can have that you have to have either a uh, completely goal oriented or completely social oriented system. That, that one there's one or the other. I think that it's definitely a mix of the two, and I think that they're both they're both essential. So, um, you know. Okay, yes. We are planning to do something further. Um, there is a series of things that we, uh, small projects and large projects that we work on for um, what we're calling the new uh, uh, editor engagement project, or it used to be called negative one to 100. We rename everything, that's how you know we're serious. Um, one of the things that is in the pipe is a project called Global Profile. And it's basically a way for us to start using uh, structured mechanisms to attach, you know, what people are, are interested in working on so that we can start finding other things for them to, to do. And what are their associations and roles or the roles they're trying to take within the, within the projects. And like say like, you know, the languages they speak and, and actually be able to provide information about themselves to the public um, or to the other, to, to other people. This is, uh, the thing that, that, that I think a lot of people are, are um, afraid of, I hear that, most of what I hear is that they don't want like buttons and they don't want friends lists. And I don't want those either because they're kind of not what we're about. Now I can see like a situation and we will likely begin experimenting with something along this line in the future, which is more like a way to express micro gratitude for uh, you know, comments. Um, or revisions, or any any type of contribution to the project, you can basically say thank you. Is that like I don't know. I I mean we have to we we need to look at that and decide whether or not the 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 uh, uh, end result. I mean how how it plays out. I don't think that by saying we're not Facebook, I don't think we're being de defensive. Um, the issue is that. <laughs> It's actually defensive in the other direction. So whenever anybody suggests something like being social, there's always somebody who drops a WP, not Facebook, like in every conversation. And uh, honestly, that's just being an asshole. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, I'm a little rough and tumble sometimes. Um, <laughs> yeah, Brian's like, sometimes. I absolutely, I absolutely agree. Can I, I'm gonna cut you off right here, because what I'm gonna suggest you go do is go to www.mediawiki.org and search and just search for global profile. Tr just trust me, it's it's exactly what you're talking about. Uh, I'm gonna go with her first. Um, <laughs> Yes. So the best way to help to do this, actually, seriously, again, I want to go back to that uh, 
uh, that, that, that global profile thing that's on MediaWiki, the best thing to do is to actually get involved into conversations on those design documents early. This is like where we have to do our development segmented. So uh, I'm working on uh, one of my tasks, actually, that I have to start pretty much once I get back to the States, is to begin working on a, a more formalized process for how we're, we're going to go about uh, producing and, and, and moving features along. And I want to get community involvement in, in as early as possible. And that starts with like, well, we've got this idea. Here's our first run of the design. Let's just put it up the flagpole, see who salutes. And we're going to see, you know, I want to hear what people's concerns are or what, uh, you know, what, they, what type of ideas they have. Because honestly, we don't know that everything is going to work. It's, it's like uh, Wikilove got translated to, uh, it's being translated into uh, Hebrew, but there's a cheeseburger on it. I mean, we can't, <laughs> we can't do that. We need, this is the type of information we need early on, and we need to know that certain ideas are bad. We're grateful to you for this, too. Yeah. Um, I have a question. On your slide about the Wikimedia Media project, the first test, and how small symbol of the incubator is the media cloud. Mm -hmm. So may I tell that we can't introduce it on a global scale? Uh, I can't speak to that, like, project birth or death. I, I, I just pulled all those images from, uh, from the front page of, the, of wikimedia.org. So. This is all our projects. Eric. Yeah. So social norms uh, evolving organically. Well, um, nerds, when uh, left to their own devices, when left to their own, any group of people, actually, when left to their own devices, it becomes Lord of the Flies. Uh, Do you ever read that book? It's a great example of what happens, is you get a bunch of people on, on, a, thi on a, put them on an island, and then when they, if they, there's no, nothing around to say, this is the wrong thing to do, or this is, an in I'm going to encourage you to behave this way. If there's no type of social normalization, what happens then is you end up having uh, stunted and, and bad behaviors. And then they just get reinforced because everybody goes, oh, well, this is the normal thing to do. In like um, a lot of hacker cultures, uh, it's, it's a normal thing to um, uh, be really, really aggressive when you have conversations. And so every, it, it makes everyone look like a jerk. But the fact is, is that that's the social norm. The reason, you know, that's one of the reasons that, uh, I, I mean, frankly, that's, that's the reason that uh, we don't have as big of a, uh, a female editing percentage is because, you know, Wikipedia socialized itself into being a bunch of misogynist jerks. I mean, I don't mean you guys, but I mean just in general. <laughs> so. uh, I think uh, one more. Can I do one more? Yeah, I got one more question. Time for one more. Does anybody have one? Because, Okay. Exactly. Exactly. The, the community is very harsh, and uh, it, it's just filled with bite. Even, even when, a long time ago, I got divorced. Uh, and the, I had a friend of mine sit me down and told me he had gone through the entire thing, and what he did, he said, uh, he said, right now, you're your own worst enemy, and you're going to be that way for like the next year. And you need to understand that. And you need to understand that when you think that you're being sincere, you're being a jerk. And when you think you're being honest, you're being an asshole. 
you, it's just the way that it comes out. It's like because your perception about things gets skewed. And so the social norms of the community are skewed. So they think that being, when you go WP, not Facebook, they think that means that they're being sincere. And that's the type of social normalization we, we, can, we can correct and fix through empathy. I mean, that's pretty much what it comes down to. Uh, I think I'm done, so. Some of them are in media, and media is kind of uh, uh, 
sometimes overdoing the banners and fancy designs or say uh, um, what they wanted is to uh, have a clean place to read the wiki from your mobile phone, from your iPad, from anything to, to read it in a way that you want to be able to resize the window and make the text resize with you and so forth. And uh, this is also kind of a migration. It's, uh, it's an automated process that can be run every day or every week or whatever, but it's, uh, it's a migration. So uh, that's, uh, that's for the migration. So for the community migration, the first one I consider a uh, public domain, this is fair use. You know where this is from, you, uh, uh, you know why it's here, if you don't read this one letters. So, uh, with community, what, what, does it, uh, uh, what does it consist of? Uh, there are, um, um, I will make some example of Wikifauna uh, um, and not only, uh, not only fauna. So, uh, first of all, you have system operators, bureaucrats, uh, in, in a good sense, people who are administering the community. You have um, technical administrators and wiki now, people who uh, work with team plays, do some, some small stuff. Uh, you have the, the real uh, Wikipedians, the ex-Wikipedians, people who write uh, uh, pages who contribute uh, textual content. Then you have uh, content beautifiers, so, uh, uh, in, in wiki found they call wiki fairies and wiki imps. Uh, the wiki imps, they found, find the problem, and they say, citation needed. But the wiki fairies is the one that you know, fix your punctuation and uh, adds proper uh, uh, text to your, uh, to your images. Uh, then you have media opinions. Media opinions do all, all kinds of other stuff as well, but uh, what they're particularly good at is discussions. They go to discussion pages and say, okay, I disagree with this article, you should move this uh, to there and so forth. And th these are the, the part of your community. You, can't, uh, you shouldn't ignore them. Then you have uh, people who create supplementary content, like uh, illustrators, uh, logo creators, whatever. Uh, then you have uh, people who are in Wikipedia. Uh, called Wiki Puppies, maybe one of the reasons uh, uh, no ice Wikipedia has done survive. Uh, then we have dormant participants, the ones that, that uh, uh, don't contribute every day, but sometimes, like uh, for, for Wiki Angels, it's, uh, it's like they, they descend sometimes to, to your wiki, they, they look at it and then they, uh, they uh, go back. But uh, you, you shouldn't ignore them as well, because first of all, they, they've been with the community for quite a while, maybe for a long, longer than you, they know it. And also, uh, it's kind of stupid that sometimes they descend, they, they look at your wiki, especially if you're migrating, it's a lot of change. They look at this and say, oh, the wiki ain't like it were. And then they, uh, they uh, ascend back to the heaven, but what you're left with is dissatisfied community. They think, oh, damn, it's, it's really not like it were. But maybe it's for the, for, for the best, but uh, uh, you have to think of all the uh, categories. And there is one category that's always uh, uh, it's always uh, overlooked and never uh, um, never talked about. It's uh, people who actually read your wiki. So in, in Fauna they call wiki princesses. So that, that they just lie like a princess on, on the pillows and they, they, they read the content that, that others write. But uh, they, they are also very important. Um, so uh, a bit of uh, information about the uh, admin. So I know, I know some of the people in the audience don't like cities and some people don't like wiki reality. And, most of the people who don't like WikiRail for some reason left. They, they didn't know I had this one. But, uh, well, say, so, um, the, the thing is, even if you don't like them, you can, you can learn from, the, from your enemies. So, the thing is, uh, an admin on one website is not uh, exactly the same as an admin on another website. Some, um, some have officers and editors, some have like wardens, uh, people who uh, kind of fight vandalism on a daily basis, experts who. Uh, um, summarize discussions and uh, make conclusions, masters who write uh, technical stuff and, and, and so forth. And on some wikis the list goes on and on and on and sometimes it's not even kind of a, a clear distinction but it's just a bunch of flags that can be given to, to a particular uh, person. It's just, uh, I, I will talk about them in, in detail in a while, but uh, you need to um, kind of already understand that if you are migrating from one platform to another, which is a really different one, then you need to be prepared that uh, people will not have exactly the same responsibilities. So how to migrate uh, community roles? Uh, well, the technical stuff, people who, uh, who do the magic with the team plates, 
sometimes they need to be re-educated and you, you have to have the documentation ready because if you're migrating from a wiki dot to, uh, to a media wiki then the whole syntax is different and uh, the, whole, um, the whole thing of uh, you know, importing parts of other uh, uh, things is templates, modules, whatever you call it in, in your wiki engine is different you need to, to give them some more information maybe they're willing to that uh, and then you have experience that, uh, that, that really write papers. You just, just provide them as, uh, just be as helpful as possible, uh, help them as much as possible and let them do their thing because they can just work the same way they, they uh, work. And then for, for people who are doing small technical stuff, uh, just be patient. Give them time, they will, they will adjust and slowly they will start doing their, their uh, small things. So for metabillions, uh, um, As, as I said, they are very good at discussing things. But the thing is, when you are migrating the wiki, uh, there is there are too many things to discuss uh, uh, naturally. But uh, you should you should value your time because if, if someone just goes to your wiki and has 100 uh, discussion pages and raises 100 questions at a time, if you spend all your time on just discussing those things, you do not solve the issues that they are addressing. So sometimes it's better to distribute the time in with uh, you know, solving something and not only discussing and how would you solve it. Um, illustrators, um, they are nice to have. It's, it's very good to have a new logo or new, uh, new fancy stuff around it. And don't be afraid to ask. I'm, 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 I'm speaking as a person who, did, uh, who uploaded like 500 uh, um, quality uh, illustrators over the years. But uh, illustrations, not illustrators. Uh, and um, just just to address those people, ask them for help and so forth. But don't uh, don't overdo it because I've I've, I've seen wiki projects fail uh, uh, a lot, uh, but I've never seen a project that failed because it didn't have a logo. Then uh, with uh, uh, with uh, no license, just uh, you know make it easy for them. Just, uh, uh, Pretend that it's very easy for, for everyone, and they will uh, they will go. So things that you need to think of when you uh, when you are migrating community, do they need to re-register the new website? If they need to, then it's a lot of work sometimes. If they don't need to, do they trust you with their passwords and so forth? So uh, how do you migrate the information about the user? Some uh, I will talk about the uh, uh, ontologies. In the uh, um, uh, the whole infrastructure about uh, user information might be uh, really, really different on a different level. Uh, how do you migrate the statistics? People who uh, have like 10,000 edits, they want to have 10,000 edits, or at least uh, have a comparable level of gratitude from the community in a new place. They don't want to be uh, like uh, uh, on the same in the same sandbox as uh, as everyone. Of course they will be, but they, they want to feel like they are appreciated. And uh, as, as we've heard, it's, it's important to, uh, to be appreciated and to make people feel um, And then you can have, of course, some name uh, clashes, especially if you merge namespaces like user and not Okay, broader picture, yeah, you have to think about the search engines and uh, um, maybe your project was integrated somewhere and have some portals and so forth. So now for content migration. So this is this is a copyrighted image, but I have the right to use it. It was done by uh, Tobias Banders. It's a, it's a logo of the language that we are uh, making in Amsterdam. It's a meta programming language where you um, can operate uh, on, uh, on structured uh, uh, content. So um, content migration. It's well, well uh, the easiest thing is uh, when you're migrating to one media wiki website to another media wiki website. You do a special export at one place, you go to another place with your file, you do a special import, that's it. Of course it's not that easy, you have to kind of uh, cut it in pieces because there might be some limitations. Uh, you might uh, uh, require some additional work, especially if you don't stop the work at the old place when you are migrating to support. But still it's kind of straightforward. Um, there is some work uh, on wiki interchange format, uh, but um, I mean this is 
uh, if it works for you or if you're looking at these slides 10 years from now from the future, then uh, please use this method, it's very good. But for now, I've, I've never seen it uh, working uh, technically. Uh, you can use web scraping, uh, and that's particularly good when you are uh, creating a front end for, for a wiki. Just make something that generates uh, uh, the HTML for the old wiki, and then you don't have to worry about how it's represented inside. And then you get that, and you might transform it into a wiki uh, if you want to import it directly, or just, just put it as, as is. Um, uh, the hard part is when you need to map between dialects. I will uh, give some, some information about that. Quite some. And then some wiki engines like TWiki have uh, HTML importing. So if you have HTML, you can import them. Just make sure you don't have the uh, navigation elements uh, in them. You, you don't want them to, to navigation elements of the old wiki to appear in the new wiki. So, um, I, sometimes I put these slides, I skip through them from the quotations from Twitter. On, on the summer school that was a month ago, someone said, if you hate something, you need to automate it. So how do we, we automate the, uh, the migration of, uh, um, of little wiki syndexes? Well, wiki syndexes, are, there are like 100 of them, maybe more, and uh, some of them just use like three square brackets in, instead of two square brackets. Or some of them put description before the, uh, the, uh, the target for the link, some of them put it uh, the other way around, and so forth. So it's, uh, uh, it's different. I will, I will show some, some examples. So um, the methods that you can use, you can use a lexical method, set, awk, grab, uh, session, replace, anything that, uh, that just uh, uh, might work for you. It's only a one-time thing, so no matter how, how hard you hack, it, it stays a hack and you, you cannot uh, reuse it. And it's very error prone. There is a very uh, uh, very famous uh, thing in um, Russian community. Some, some encyclopedia started like you know, five years ago and uh, they thought it's a good start to rip off a lot of content from Wikipedia. I'm not sure if they were created in Wikipedia or not, but the thing is they, they, were, they just created a thing to uh, grab a lot of uh, articles from Wikipedia and put them into uh, their own thing. The thing was that they were called blah 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 encyclopedia. The, the site is long dead, no one knows what it is. But they didn't want to have Wikipedia mentioned on their website. So they say, okay, let's replace wiki by encyclo, and then we have encyclopedia every time they say Wikipedia. But uh, the thing is, in Russian there is no dis distinction between W and, and, and V, so uh, the, uh, the, the famous uh, article was about Vikings that became an article about encyclones. And uh, it went uh, about uh, the lies of en encyclones and the history of the world. The lexical approach, they, they, it really does something like that. And um, sometimes it's, it's very hard to, to spot those things. Because you just automate it, you run it on your 10,000 articles, and yeah, something happens. Uh, then you can have this thing called formal grammars that we use for programming languages, and uh, it's kind of complicated in, in theory and sometimes it's practice as well, but it, it works for programming languages, also for complicated ones, so why not try to use it here? Um, the particularly uh, um, uh, wiki syntax is, is good to represent the skeletal grammar, so island grammars, where you don't parse all the content like you do in the, uh, Java or whatever. But you kind of have the, the uh, lake of everything and then you parse some of the parts of it. But in in, uh, uh, in uh, ideal situation, what we want is uh, a wiki uh, page is a structured content. We want to operate on it like a structured content and we want to uh, manipulate it in, in a semi automatic way. It says that we say what to do and it, it, it does it. So I promised some examples of wiki syntax. I just grabbed a couple of uh, wikis. I'm obviously not doing a comparison of uh, 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 100. But uh, the thing is, so for example, on, on, on wiki.dot and, and tdwiki, you have this kind of for bold and for italics. And if you combine them, it's it's a straightforward combination. But on tdwiki, it's not. So uh, bold, uh, bold italics and bold monospace is just specific types of italics and, and, and monospace. And in, in media wiki is this barricade of apostrophes uh, that uh, actually can be treated like uh, two and then three or three and then two, but you never know until you hit somewhere at the end. Uh, uh, it, 
this is actually a special thing that switches on both and attacks at the same time. And uh, well, the, the list goes on and on. Sometimes they fall down to to HTML when they cannot represent it. But then again, not the whole HTML is represented there. So it's it's like bits of HTML plus what we what we hack there plus uh, plus some uh, links. And it becomes even even worse when with uh, links and images and whatnot. So uh, uh, the point is that. Uh, uh, every time I don't know about you, but every time I, I learn about uh, uh, new uh, new wiki syntax, I need to experiment. So, uh, okay, this is how I make an image. This is how I make a link. How do I make an image with a link? On some websites, it's an image with a specific parameter with a link. On some, it's just a straightforward combination and so forth. And then you you have to kind of uh, uh, know these things in advance, and they can be formally specified in the grammar. And then when you transform, it uh, uh, becomes uh, easy. So uh, the, the formal uh, thing, well, we're not working with source code on wiki text. Formal thing is uh, the, the, the modern uh, paradigm that it's called easy, extract, analyze, and synthesize. If you're interested, uh, just just read the theory. Uh, there's a very long article about that. Um, but what we need for, for us is e extract is basically parse. So we have uh, a grammar. We either write our own grammar or, uh, or we use one of the existing grammars. None of the existing grammars so far uh, cover the whole uh, uh, the whole media wiki. But for, for migration, you don't need to cover everything. But uh, yeah, eventually it would be nice to have uh, the whole thing. So the, the last thing, the, the, I'm, I'm sure it's the last one I submitted it to the last week. So uh, it's uh, uh, recovery of media wiki grammar is on uh, archive, which is a, a free website. You can download it and uh, see what what grammar recovery looks like. Um, so this is uh, 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 an example of how a uh, definition of a, uh, of a wiki syntax would look like. This is a very simple one that just uh, shows uh, anything that's not a link and a link. And uh, yeah, it just says that wiki text is some symbols and words, links. And word is anything that's allowed by uh, with a, a lexical uh, form. And a uh, link is blah, blah, blah. And, and, and all, all the, all the, the square brackets that you may know, it's just there in a formal way. This thing can be used to automatically create a, a parser and to operate on extra syntax tree. To do some analysis, analysis can include some something that you need to prepare, have in preparation for, uh, for your migration. And um, after that, you write a couple of uh, uh, couple of functions like in, you do in Java, but with some uh, easy set operation with uh, four cycles and so And then, for example, you can say that, okay, this, uh, this, then just do the root of the, what, what was there, but if not, just flip this nation in the description. And, um, yeah, th th this is how you transform a syntax with, uh, with RASCAL. You can uh, follow any, uh, any of the links and read a lot about that, and it's, there is a huge theory of that. So, uh, a couple of words about ontology migration. So, what's, what's ontology? It's, uh, uh, it's kind of an infrastructure around your thing. It's how uh, how you um, uh, combine pages in a wiki. Basically, how, how your wiki uh, looks like. So, uh, this is an, uh, a picture taken from a, a paper of and Warren about uh, from I think from Wikisim uh, uh, paper. Um, it's uh, here on a wiki uh, ontology. Um, it's, um, it's it's highly questionable, so I, I would have asked you if uh, um, if you agree with that, but uh, I wouldn't put it uh, in a special section if, if I were uh, to agree with that. So this is kind of more uh, more like a media wiki when you have uh, uh, when you have multiple articles on media and a history of edits, revisions, and so forth. But um, you don't really know if all these things are essential in that for for any wiki. So, for example, does article has to have a discussion page? Not really. Does article have to have only one discussion page? Not really. It's a technical thing about media wiki, and actually, there are sometimes several uh, unlinked uh, discussions there. Um, there are users that don't have uh, uh, that don't edit their uh, page, but there are not, not a lot of them. 
And so there, there are a lot of uh, questions like that about how to go with categories and support. They will eventually will, uh, need to be uh, thought of also by media wiki developers, but uh, for now you have to uh, think about how to map this, for example, to uh, the ontology of Wikidot, if you're going from Wikidot to, to media wiki, or from, from TV wiki, or from anything like that. Uh, I'll skip the, the mismatches uh, because they're kind of uh, easy to guess. But um, go to you to conclusion. So, um, in short, just prepare well for migration. It's it's a hard thing to do, but it's it's pretty doable. Just uh, uh, dedicate yourself to it. Uh, research what's what what needs to be done. Uh, probably have a dedicated person or I don't know, uh, perhaps a, a committee uh, if you have a lot of people and um, uh, inform the community. They, they, they deserve to know what, what's going on and what, what exact consequences will it have. Some people will, might decide to leave, but it, it's not the reason to, to not <coughs> to inform them. Uh, content migration, the most tedious part, the most hard part, it can be automated and please do so. Don't, don't do it by hand. Uh, ontology mismatches, you have to, again, think about them in preparation and know how to map them. Uh, for people who really work for you, we can minimize the problems, just make it uh, uh, as transparent as possible. Um, if nothing works, then you can encapsulate the content if it's written in a different style or whatever, and you can address it later. Again, prepare for the work of Wikipedians, and then you uh, can proceed with uh, the new week. Yeah, so uh, once again, for gratitude, thanks for uh, listening, thanks for uh, scholarship, and these are two URLs that are slowly appearing here. One is for the rest of the language. There is a release either already done or uh, will be later this uh, this week. A very new one. It works in Eclipse. It's a very easy thing to uh, uh, to start working with. And if you have any questions, just uh, uh, address me. This is my uh, web page that has uh, slides and all the other information and links to other uh, uh, papers and whatnot. So you were uh, quite silent, some people left, some people uh, stayed, but I, I see that people are looking at me, so probably they, uh, they're not sleeping. So uh, thanks again for everything, uh, and uh, ask me something. Mm -hmm. Yes? Um, I really liked your categorization of the like the I liked it too. Yes, it's mine. But you can use it. It's uh, it's by SA. Just, just mention the name. One of so my names. Have you seen other examples of one hundred like this? Um, well, the, there is a, a big page on Wikipedia on Wikifauna, and it has all kind of wiki ogres, wiki uh, 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 knights that, that kind of fight everyone. As a part of wiki oh, wiki dragons that sleep all the time and then they wake up and do thousands of edits in a day and then sometimes destroy everything in their farm and so forth. So uh, there, there is it's it's, uh, it's obviously not serious and it's never meant to be um, used in classification in the form of uh, all types of Wikipedians formally. But uh, I kind of reuse it in a serious way, but it's uh, uh, it's also useful. More questions. <coughs>